In this segment, we're going to talk about uh, an example of doing classification for sentiment analysis, and that's going to help us start to build up our pipeline for how to go from text to feature vectors, which uh, we're then going to be able to use in a classifier um, and you know, take labeled data and train a classification model. Uh, so let's start with a simple example. The movie was great. Um, so this is uh, you know, going to be a positive uh, sentiment example. So um, we've talked about positive and negative uh, labels in binary classification. And for sentiment analysis, that's going to correspond to positive sentiment, uh, meaning you like something, or negative sentiment, meaning you don't like something. Um, let me make this example uh, a little bit more complicated. Uh, would watch again. All right. So why do we think that uh, this example is positive? Well, it has this word great in it, which uh, is going to be a word that typically conveys positive sentiment. Uh, and we have this idea of watching something again, right? That sounds like, you know, probably you liked it enough in order to do that. So another example The film was awful I'll never watch again All right so uh, in this case, this example is conveying negative sentiment. We see the word awful. And interestingly, we see uh, this, this, uh, you know, this pair of words, watch again. Uh, but this case, we're saying we'll never watch again. So uh, you know, this kind of indicates a little bit about why this task is going to be complicated, because we're going to have to think about factors like negation and, and kind of higher level structure and how they impact things. Um, but the basic kinds of models we're going to look at uh, are going to use what are called bag of words features, and we're going to get to those in a second. But those features are essentially just going to look at what words or short sequences of words are present in this, this data. OK, so there's going to be roughly two steps. Um, so we're going to map from text um, to uh, these feature vectors, and this is a step called feature extraction. Uh, and then given a, da you know, a data set of delabeled examples, um, we're going to train a classifier. Uh, so in this segment, we're going to talk about the first step of this process, just how to go through this, this feature extraction step, uh, and then we'll come back to the machine learning aspects of this. OK, so for feature extraction, then, um, we're going to think about how we can turn one of these examples into a feature vector. All right, so we're just going to simplify it to the movie was great. All right, so the basic, uh, the, the kind of most basic version of features we are going to use is what we call bag of words. Uh, and roughly what this means is assume we have 10,000 words in our vocabulary. So we have a list of, let's say, the 10,000 most common words in whatever language we're doing sentiment in. Um, in this case, that'll be English. And 
we lay them out in a big vector. Um, so, you know, we have the, a, of, at, you know, et cetera. Somewhere down the line we have movie, somewhere down the line was, somewhere down the line great, um, et cetera. So there's 10,000 of these. And the way this is going to work is we're going to have a one in each position that, uh, we, that the word is present in the input example and a zero in all of the other positions. Um, so that is going to lead to a vector that looks like this. So we are going to have four ones um, and you know, 9,996 zeros in this vector. All right, and so there's, a, there's kind of an additional uh, variable here, which we haven't talked, which doesn't come up in this example. But um, these values could either be counts. Um, so how many the are present, or it can just be presence absence. Um, so this is going to be either 0 or 1. And so in that, uh, in that count case, if we had multiple does in the sentence, we would get you know, a count of 2 or a count of 3 in this feature vector. All right, so, there's a, so, so, so this is the representation that we're going to use uh, kind of going forward. And it's a fairly effective representation for, uh, for sentiment analysis. Um, I'll talk about a, uh, two small extensions of it. Um, one is what we call bag of n-grams. So uh, an n-gram is, is just a sequence of n consecutive words. And so uh, if we think about the two grams, of the example, we have the movie. I'm just going to underline them so you know that they're a unit. Movie was and was great. I mean, if you want, you can add it's kind of separate start and end tokens that get kind of rolled up with these as well. But we're just going to stick with these uh, with these three for now. Uh, and so you can build a similar kind of representation where instead of 10,000 words, now you maybe have 100,000 bigrams. Uh, and you know, that can be your feature space now. And so that's going to allow you to capture things like if you said the movie was not great, you're going to have a bigram there for not great, and you're going to be able to use that. All right, and one other uh, modification of this uh, is what's called TFIDF, term frequency inverse document frequency. Uh, so we're not going to use this a ton in the course going forward, um, but I will briefly mention it. Uh, term frequency is just the count uh, of the term. Um, so, you know, again, this is just the count representation from above. So if you have the twice, um, the term frequency of the is going to be 2. And then IDF is what's called inverse document frequency. Uh, and there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of ways to do this, but roughly It's written as the log of the total number of documents over the number of documents with word w in them. And so the reason you use a representation like this uh, is because what this, what this does is suppose that you have a common word like the. Um, then the is going to be in almost every document in some kind of collection that you have. And this 
uh, log term is going to be very close to zero. And so uh, the TFIDF score for a word is just going to be the term frequency times the inverse document frequency. And so then the is going to receive uh, a value in this vector that's very close to zero. Whereas if uh, instead you're, you have uh, a word that's very rare, like mango or something like that, um, maybe mango shows up 10 times in your document and actually only shows up in one out of 10,000 other documents that you might have. And in this case, this log term uh, is going to be reasonably large. If you're taking log base 10, it'll be 4. And so you know, now you're going to end up with a much higher value for that. And so it's going to emphasize words that are kind of characteristic of uh, the particular document that we're talking about while ignoring other ones. All right, like I said, we're not going to make, make too much use of that, but I wanted to introduce the concept. All right, so the last thing I'm going to talk about here is pre-processing. So we talked about mapping from either words or n-grams into uh, this feature space, but what we haven't talked about is how to go from a raw string to those words or n-grams. Uh, and so this is a pro process called tokenization. And in English, we often take tokenization for granted because uh, we have spaces between words. And so um, so-called white space tokenization works pretty well. Uh, but there are a lot of languages in the world where that assumption is not good. And identifying what units correspond to words is actually a fairly tricky task in and of itself. Um, but we can illustrate the challenges of tokenization uh, or the benefits of it even with English. So let's say we have... Uh, I'm just going to look at these kind of snippets. Was great versus was great. All right. If you just use white space tokenization, you end up with two different words in your vocabulary. Um, so in that bag of words vocabulary, we're going to have great. And then we're also going to have great with an exclamation point after it. And so this is not great. In that, uh, you know, when we train a machine learning model, we are going to treat these as different concepts. Uh, but that doesn't seem right. I mean, really what we're doing is we're combining a piece of punctuation with the word great. Uh, and we really just shouldn't be doing that. The punctuation is really a kind of separate thing, um, but it just gets merged together when we actually write it down. So what a tokenizer does um, is it's going to take... Uh, a string like this and turn it into a string with possibly some additional spaces. Um, another example of what these do is if you have the word wasn't, um, it will turn this into was and then an apostrophe t. So it won't actually rewrite the n apostrophe t as, uh, it's as, as not, but uh, it will break these up. Um, and, and tokenizers will also do things like handle hyphenated noun compounds um, and a few other things. But primarily what you're going to see them be useful for is for uh, kind of breaking up these contractions and uh, handling punctuation correctly. All right. So... Uh, that's one thing that we need to think about as pre-processing. Um, another thing, uh, and this is something we only do sometimes, is stop word removal. So stop words are generally function words uh, in English. And the reason we might want to remove these is the same motivation as TFIDF. Uh, these are words that uh, sort of skew our, uh, skew our bag of words vectors and don't actually contribute a lot to a task like sentiment analysis. You know, generally, the notion of sentiment comes from content words rather than these function words. So uh, we are not always going to want to do this, but Sometimes, uh, and particularly for sentiment, this can be a good thing to do. Um, another thing you might think of doing sometimes is 
uh, casing your data. Um, so this might be lower casing. Um, again, if you're doing something like sentiment analysis, that could be a good idea. Um, it could be true casing if you're doing something that works from raw speech data, and maybe your speech recognizer, you know, returns just uh, data that's all, you know, that, that doesn't have any case associated with it. All right, and then uh, the fourth thing is handling unknown words. Um, so if you have a rare word like direct, this is not going to be accounted for in the bag of words space. You know, it's not one of the 10,000 words in the English language, so 10,000 most common words. And so uh, what we are going to do is we are often going to replace this with some sort of unc placeholder. Now, for sentiment analysis, you can often just drop this word. Um, but for uh, in other cases, we're actually going to want to make sure that we have these unc tokens in here. Um, and then the final, the final piece here is indexing. Um, and this is simply the process of taking your string, once you've done all these things to it, the tokenization, the stop word removal, the casing, the unknown word replacement, um, and map each either word or n-gram, whatever you're using, um, into uh, the space of natural numbers. And so we, that basically that just, just looks like uh, use a map. We need to keep track of, oh, okay, the is at position five in the feature space, and great is at position 247. So if you go through all these steps, you should be able to convince yourself that if I give you a raw string, then you can apply these transformations, these five transformations, and turn it into a, one of these count-based feature vectors or, or, or presence-based feature vectors, um, either bag of words or TFIDF. And that's going to be the first step in our pipeline towards building a sentiment analysis system. And that's it for this segment.